Welcome to my thoughts on the 1990s X-Men animated show, season 3, episodes 14 and 15. These are The Dark Phoenix Parts 1 and 2, Dazzled and The Inner Circle. So, before I get into it, there is a link in the description box to donate to the SAG after Strikers. Please do so. Extremely important cause. There's also some links to videos that explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in to Dazzled. So, yeah, the, you know, Phoenix is being, you know, they're trying to to heal her, and the episode does indeed fe feature Dazzler. I was hoping when I saw the, the title, I forget if, I can imagine she's also in the the comic. It's been a long time since I read, but yeah, um, you know, I may have mentioned in an earlier video when you know when Dark Phoenix, the movie, the live action movie, came out in I guess 2019. I I sat down and read the entire Dark Phoenix saga, and there's I'm almost certain there's definitely some jealousy between Jean and another woman, Cyclops. And, yeah, very cool when Cyclops fights the cyborg. And Wolverine slices a salami with his claws, which is now a meme. You know, someone pointed out, like, oh, you know, if I had claws, I could do, you know, I wonder what I would use, you know, I would use them for this, this, and this. And then the image of him slicing the salami. And... Yeah, Leland tortures his cyborg ally, so you get a sense these these are the bad guys, in case the kidnapping attempt wasn't clear enough. So, in the comics, it's not called the Circle Club. I do appreciate, you know, I do think Inner Circle is not the worst name for this sort of thing. But yeah, it's not, it's not quite called the Circle Club. Um... I suppose just in case there are any kids watching this, I shouldn't say the the name of the original club. Let's just go with the Other People Fire Club. And let's see. Yeah, and Emma Frost explains how she was able to get to to Xavier. And this features a lot of clips from earlier episodes. I'm not sure it was entirely necessary to have quite that many, but there is also a lot of backstory to divulge. And although, you know, a lot of what some, it's, yeah, a lot of what Emma Frost says is stuff that the audience already knows. Although, I feel like I heard that originally there was a longer break you know, I'm watching these in the order that they're on on Disney Plus. I think originally there might have been a longer break between them, or was it the other couple of episodes, the last couple of episodes that were not? Anyway, moving on. You know, in case someone forgot. And yeah, we we learn that Phoenix is becoming dominant, and Jean is jealous of Dazzler, and so goes with. Wingard, or th that allows Wingard to more easily slip in. And let's see. Yeah, and, and, um, right, yeah, and, and Phoenix sees Cyclops with Dazzler in person also. First, it was just him mentioning he had to go check on Dazzler. I don't love, she's very other woman coded, like, you know, oh, I guess this is the inevitable girlfriend. Oh, I guess, ex-girlfriend. I didn't think that was completely necessary, although the thing with, you know, some guys just can't take a hint, like, is, I guess she doesn't know that that's the guy who's been trying to kidnap her. Yeah, because she's only she's seen the the cyborg and the the guards, and she does you know she does help when she recognizes the the kidnappers, and 
yeah, you know, Jean marries Jason Wingard. Really, really cool. You know, excellent fight between all the X-Men and all the, the Circle Club members. And, yeah, Shaw, just so cool, you know, absorbing, you know, Rogue's super-powered punches, Cyclops' you know, optic blasts, just, yeah. And the episode ends with Gene declaring, I am Phoenix. And that brings us to the next episode, The Inner Circle. So yeah, we are still at the H.E. Double Hockey Sticks Fire Club, and Will Rain does the Dirty Harry reference, the do I feel lucky, and, you know, not the biggest fan of the hard right conservative politics of that movie, the, the fascism and everything, but it's a, it's a, it's a good reference. And... Yeah, we get some really great Wolverine stuff. You know, he of course, you know, he made it even though he got thrown through like four floor, floors. And he has to fight his way up. And just, yeah, really, really, you know, and the, the guards take these stabs and he just cuts them. Just, yeah. He does at one point take the, the, the knives to the, the sorry. Claws, the claws to the the arm of the the cyborg whose name escapes me at the moment, and you know he seems like surprised. Oh, cyborg! And it's like you never ever cut the like on this show. Wolverine never attacks a human being in a way that could po cause permanent. You know, I'm not saying that I want kids to see that. I'm just saying why is it okay when it's like a cyborg arm that he's like cut it like later in this episode rogue rips off the cyborg cyborg arm that's still pretty intense for a kids show and really really love when cyclops is inside gene's mind in the wingard you know construct the the you know off with the the visors you can see his eyes and they're they're like fencing and each time Cyclops, you know, he tries to get hit in and hits a wall. You know, it also reminded me of, like, the kind of thing you'd see in um, Spider-Man Soul with a Mysterio kind of illusion. Just really, really cool. Which I think they did an excellent job of in... Is it a spoiler? I guess it's not a spoiler to say in uh, Far From Home, you know. And there's one point where... Cyclops goes up against like a spider web and just yeah a lot of lot of great stuff. They they do a really great stuff job on this show with like psychic fights and such. And yeah, now that Wingard is in control of the Phoenix, he manages to perform a coup. You know, every member of the Heckfire Club thumbs down the the Shaw have retaining power. And I like that some of it is like really petty. Like the that one guy is like, you've called me a fool one too many times. Like, okay. And yeah, of course he is not able to maintain control of the Phoenix, which you know, the the fact that the Phoenix is basically uncontrollable, is of course a central tenant of... You know, that is something that they do actually get in both of the live-action versions of this story. It's just that, you know, something that's much better about this adaptation than the, the Last Stand is that here, the story is actually about Phoenix. Like, there's other stuff but it's focused on Phoenix. You know, you have the X-Men who are trying to help Phoenix. You have the Circle Club who are trying to control her, you know, and and the way it affects her and her, you know, Jean and her relationship with Cyclops, you know. And the, you know, the fact that, yeah, and, uh, yeah, in, in the... Yeah, in the in Last Stand, they don't really do a thing with people trying to mess with her mind. They're mostly just trying to talk her down, 
or like lure her with with you know the saying you know you can be really powerful in the there is some manipulation of her and her mental state in the 2019 film and you know part of why it fails is just the and it's even you know it's it's similar you know they want the power they want to be able to use that power for themselves so similar to to this in the comic this is very very close to the comic from what i recall and the the thing is that here they're basically like the illuminati you know there's the, it's this group of of evil people sitting in a room you know, like the, the one of the first things we hear about the Circle Club is, you know, this is extremely powerful. This this individual is extremely powerful. Tradition, you know, insists that we, the Circle Club, control control that power. You know, so so just very straightforward, easy to to get into. And then in the you know, I mean, I can kind of appreciate that they tried to fit in aliens. You know, finally. In the 2019 film, first time the you know the the live action films that kept running away from the comic book label for so long. So I, I get that that's you know there are you know they haven't been on the show yet, but there there will be aliens as part of the Dark Phoenix saga. But it just felt, yeah, it you know the the movie would be so much better if it were just human beings trying to manipulate her. And yeah, very cool when Beast fights Shaw, and it's this thing, you know, he's he's spinning him around, pointing out, you know, you can't absorb the power that's not directed at you. But Shaw does manage to, to get away. And then Storm comes in with a cold front, and yeah, very, very clever. That's again, you know, how can you absorb that? It's just snow, you know, it's it's cold. That's not so yeah. And I kind of like Rogue's quips about the cyborg, you know, the, the, you know, she rips off the cyborg arm and he runs off and she's like, oh, thanks for the hand, sugar. Boy, these cyborgs, cyborg limbs probably cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> so corny. And yeah, the episode ends with, you know, now she proclaims, I am the dark phoenix. So yeah, very, very ominous and yeah not a lot else to say about these episodes i thought they did you know as usual great character moments they managed to fit in some great action everyone gets to show off what they're really good at and why they're different from the other mutants with powers yeah always a fan of when the show pits the x-men against another team with superpowers and you know thankfully they do that a lot there's a lot of of superpower teams they end up fighting over the course of the show and yeah i suppose it's possible that the inner circle won't play a big part after this episode since now they've lost control of her i think the next is when we get into the space stuff which that was also like when when watching the last stand you know it's like how are you doing dark phoenix with no cosmic element like what what are you even doing what what like cuz that's the, like if you haven't watched that movie in a while there's no like the phoenix doesn't come from space in that one it's just like this inborn like gene already had this like dark side to her that uh, you know and and it's just like you know I, okay i get that you don't you don't want to do you don't want to do aliens you do want to do a really famous story pick another one pick another famous story not every comic x-men story is about aliens or giant robots so anyway um yeah so i am going to go ahead and Go watch the, the the last two episodes of the Dark Phoenix Saga, and then record. Although I guess based on the upload, it's possible it'll look like the videos hit at the same time. But yeah, um, so catch you in a bit. Make my Marvel.